Carausius has been forgotten by most modern historians, probably because we really don't know very much about him, but he's actually one of antiquity's most fascinating characters. He founded his own empire, the first British Empire, and ruled for six years at the end of Rome's crisis of the third century. But before we look at the man himself, let's have a look at the Roman world around this time. During the crisis, plague, barbarian invasion, and civil war ravaged the empire. Diocletian, who became emperor in AD 284, tried to end the crisis once and for all. He actually split power with his best friend, Maximian, who took the west of the empire, while Diocletian took the east. Don't you let anything happen in the western provinces, he said to Maximian. But things did happen. By AD 286, the very man Maximian had put in charge of protecting the English Channel, Carousius, had run away to Britain. Apparently he'd been taking back Romano-British treasures from Saxon raiders, but keeping it all for himself. Whatever the case was, with the death warrant hanging over him, Carousius gained the support of the Roman army and took over as emperor in Britain, forming his very own Britannic Empire. There's also evidence that he controlled part of northern France. One of the amazing things about Carousius is that we really don't know very much about him. The only evidence for him existing survives in a few short extracts from ancient sources, and these are a bit dodgy at best. This is mainly because the legitimate emperors didn't want anyone to remember this embarrassing event. There's also a milestone from Carlisle, and they actually turned that upside down. They couldn't wipe out one form of evidence, however. His coins. Carousius, like so many usurpers of the 3rd century AD, minted millions of coins showing off his image and values. These coins are common in Britain today, and are found by metal detectorists all the time. Over 4,000 have been found on the Portable Antiquities Scheme database. This is a coin of Carousius. Numismatists call them radiates because of the radiate crown on the Emperor's head. They were known as Antoniniani, but that's quite a long and awkward word to spell and say, so uh, radiate it is. These were common coins in the 3rd century. On the obverse, or head side, we see the man himself, strikingly different in appearance from other Emperors in the period, and wearing his radiate crown. He looks big, he looks strong, he looks ready for anything. And there is one thing we can tell from this coin. He was probably obese. On the reverse, we can see the figure of a standing deity, in this case Pax, or the personification of peace. Pax coins of Carousius are very, very common, which probably means he was trying to tell his people that everything was fine, even though we know it probably wasn't. This was Roman propaganda at its finest, and Carousius utilised it amazingly on his coinage. We do have records, actually, that Maximian's invasion fleet was poised right across the channel, but apparently the invasion failed due to bad weather. Yeah, okay. The ML on the coin refers to London. Carousius almost certainly opened Britain's first London mint, which wouldn't happen again until the medieval period. Some coins also feature the letter C as a mint mark, and this hasn't really been understood. You might think uh, Colchester at first, Camelodurum, uh, but it could also be Glevum, Gloucester, or something we just don't understand. Well, Pax is by far the most common design, other types do come up from time to time. Some rare coins were minted to celebrate his loyal forces. They depict animals, and give us a valuable glimpse into the legions which stood by him in his revolt. Like this coin, which celebrates the 9th Legion Parthica with a centaur. Carousius' coinage was enormous, and can be found in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. These small coins were struck on top of earlier coins. He was literally rewriting history. The larger coins, however, were much more similar to those of the Central Roman Empire. He also made coins the like of which hadn't been seen for over a century. Pure silver denarii. In a time where silver was incredibly scarce, these coins are incredibly rare, and may have been given as gifts to those close to the new emperor. These were accompanied by even rarer gold or rei, of which less than 20 are known, like this one from Derbyshire. Somewhat uniquely for rebels in the 3rd century, Carousius made no attempt to take the empire for himself. He seemed happy enough in Britain. There's no evidence that Roman Britons rebelled against him either. Often sidelined from the events of the Central Empire, they were probably happy to have the protection from barbarian raids that had been so common before. Unfortunately for the multi-chinned emperor, he was killed by his finance minister Electus in 293. The pirate emperor had ruled his private domain for six years, and was succeeded by Electus, his assassin. But that is another story.